Welcome to this video, how to tell if your computer has been hacked and what you should do about it. And I came across this article from tomsguide.com, has your computer been hacked, 11 ways to tell and what to do now. I wanna go over this with you to share my thoughts, what I agree with, what I disagree with, add additional context. Skipping down to signs that you have been hacked, first thing up is warning signs. They are referencing warnings coming from your antivirus, whether it's Windows Defender or something else, that malware has been detected. And keep in mind that malware is a very very broad term and just because you have malware on the computer does not necessarily mean that you've been hacked it might mean that you have a spammy usually unwanted program that is suggesting that you remove it could also mean that you have been breached but just keep in mind a warning alone does not automatically mean that you have malware that has led to unauthorized access next thing up is webcam light is on and so most cameras these days whether it's on a smartphone a laptop or a dedicated webcam a light will turn on when activated and that's intentional to let the owner or user of the device know if the webcam's on to alert them if they did not intend for it to be turned on slow performance and this can include high cpu usage this could be noticing that your laptop battery is draining quickly and often when a device especially a computer has been accessed without the user knowing it's probably because something's running in the background that's allowing them to do that and that does take up resources Freezes or crashes, meaning the computer itself is not functioning correctly. You find yourself restarting it often. That could indicate that you have malware on the computer. Again, not all malware automatically means you have been hacked, but it could be one of many symptoms. If you notice strange apps or programs, specifically things that you don't remember installing or putting on the computer, that's a good sign that something has been breached or at the very least that you have malware on the computer. Missing or modified files. If you notice something has been changed, move in any way different and you don't remember doing that, that could be another symptom. Unexpected changes to your browser. And again, hacking is a bit of a broad term here. You could have malware on the computer that redirects your browsers to different websites or to malicious websites. They may not have yet gained access or unauthorized access to anything, but this could be an avenue to accomplish that. Odd emails. And keep in mind that this video and this article is focused on if your computer has been hacked, getting an odd email or an unwarranted email may be more of a symptom of an account being compromised but it could also play into this as well it's important to recognize though because the steps that you take are going to be a little bit different if your computer has been hacked versus if one of your personal accounts has been hacked though there is a lot of overlap pop-up windows coming up again this could be a symptom of a potentially unwanted program that was installed on the computer so maybe not necessarily hacking in the terms that someone gained unauthorized access to something but at the very least, something that you probably did not intend to be on the computer is now there. Password reset notifications. Again, this may not necessarily mean that your computer has been hacked. It could mean an account has been hacked. Your account can get hacked without hacking your computer. There's various means of hacking. Could this be a symptom of your computer being hacked? Yes, but just keep in mind, this will probably come up more often with accounts. And then the last one is unusual network activity, kind of playing into what was mentioned earlier. If there's malware in the background using up computer resources it's probably also using up network bandwidth and you're going to notice some unusual network activity if you're monitoring it so the next section is what to do next or what are your action items the first thing it says is disconnect from the internet okay maybe sure if someone has gained unauthorized access that will cut them off but that may not solve the root problem change your passwords again this is probably more to do with an accounts and it is possible if someone's gained access unauthorized access to your computer, it is possible that your personal accounts have been compromised. So yes, I would go through and change your passwords. If you have two-factor authentication enabled on everything, you should in the short term be okay, but you're still gonna want to change those passwords. So this one is probably the biggest one that I disagree with. I'm not saying don't run a scan, but this list is supposed to be the list of solutions. This is not a solution if you've been hacked. Yes, you can run a scan. Yes, it will let you know if it found malware and yes, it can remove it. But if someone really has gained unauthorized access to your computer, do not take half measures. And this is a half measure. You need to completely wipe the computer, reformat, reinstall Windows, all of it, the whole 20 yards. This should be used more as a way of determining if there has been a breach of some kind. It shouldn't be used as the solution. Again, you need to completely reset, wipe the computer, and it's not as difficult as it was 20 years ago. There's a reset option built right into Windows. If you're on 
Mac, it's a little bit different, but regardless, no half measures. Next up is review your files, folders, and settings. Again, this is a great reason why you should not be taking a half measure and resetting because this will resolve itself if you're completely wiping the drive and reinstalling Windows. Same with the next item, enable your firewall. It should already always be on. There's no reason you should be turning this off, but again, if somehow it got turned off, yes, you can go turn it on, but if you just reset and reinstall everything, this will be on by default. Monitor your accounts. Again, I think Tom's guide got a little off track here because again, there's a difference between having an account hack versus the computer. There can definitely absolutely be overlap. And yes, if someone gains access to your computer, they could gain access to your accounts, but there is a difference. As a side note, I would always recommend freezing your credit. It's free to do, do it today. Back up your files. This is very good, especially if you've encountered ransomware or if something just got deleted, just be careful. There is a small possibility that something malicious could get backed up, but by and large, having backups of your computer is a good thing. Update your operating system. So this is something I would recommend doing proactively, not reactively or retroactively. Staying up to date can help prevent getting hacked in the first place. But again, no half measures. If you've been hacked, completely wipe the drive, reformat, reinstall Windows. And as part of that, it will update your system. And then just make sure that you stay up to date going forward. And not just with Windows updates, but browser updates, all of your applications. If you're using some sort of software that no longer receives updates, stop using it, remove it. That will help prevent you from getting hacked again in the future. Use strong, unique passwords. Sure, okay, definitely you do want a strong password for your computer. Keep in mind that that is mainly to prevent someone who has physical access to your computer from gaining unwarranted or unauthorized access, but this may not specifically stop someone from getting malware on your computer. And so you do need to keep that in mind. Of course, this is very important with keeping your account secure. Make sure that you have 2FA or MFA enabled on all of your accounts. If you have some service that does not give you the option for 2FA, you might want to consider not using it. Use a VPN. This one I have a lot of concerns about on this list. I'm not saying a VPN is bad. A VPN can be a good tool, but there is so much misinformation about what a VPN is and what it does. It does not make you invincible. It does not make you anonymous. And on the spectrum of security to privacy, it's somewhere in the middle. But as far as keeping you from getting hacked, you know, if you're using a public network, it can prevent things from being intercepted, but it's not going to necessarily stop malware from being installed on the computer. It's not going to stop you from clicking on something. I mean, some of these VPN services do have some malware filtering to some degree, but at the end of the day, using a VPN really is not something I would say is a solution here. Again, I'm not saying a VPN is a tool you shouldn't use, but I think it's a little misleading as far as being on this list. And also keep in mind, there is a lot of scummy, shady VPN services out there. There's a lot of shady marketing. If you look at the companies behind a lot of these VPNs, they are data brokers or in some sort of data collection industry. Some of them appear to be honeypots. There's really only three to four VPN services out there I would even recommend looking at. The rest are just garbage. And so by installing one of those on the computer, in some ways, you're making things worse. Know the signs of phishing. And this one really just comes down to education. Be very, very, very careful with messages in general, both text messages and emails. If you receive a message of any kind with a link, a button, an attachment, it's trying to get you to click on something that should immediately send up red flags. Even if it looks legitimate, stop. And I think education in general just kind of segues into the last thing here where you need to understand that hacking does not happen by magic. Most likely you, the user, clicked on something that you shouldn't have. Again, an email, a message of some kind, you went to a malicious website, you downloaded or installed something malicious. And a couple things missing from this list is when you're out in public with, for example, a laptop or a mobile device, you need to not use public Wi-Fi. Even using a VPN with public Wi-Fi, things can go wrong. And make sure you turn off the Wi-Fi setting and turn off Bluetooth. Also, if someone has physical access to your computer, that means they can exploit the ports on your computer, whether it's Ethernet port, USB ports, the motherboard in general could be exploited. So if someone has had physical access to your computer, that's a whole nother line of defense you need to put up that is not on this list, whether it's locking your computer down, putting it in a safe place, restricting who has access to it, making sure that the password is not known to everyone. Stuff like that is another thing that, again, is not on this list. Hopefully that helps, but if you do have any comments or questions, please post them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it. And if you would like to support the channel, go ahead and hit that join button to become a member for as low as 99 cents a month, the thanks button, the subscribe button, or that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.